Hey everyone, it's me, iPinoy Phone, and today I will show you some CDA tweaks for the stock iOS apps on my iPhone 5. I think these tweaks are great and that Apple should have implemented them on their iOS a long time ago because some of the apps are lacking in terms of functionality and these tweaks were designed to fill in those gaps or whatever feature was missing. So the first tweaks I will talk about is for the App Store. If you want to download an app, App Store requires you to enter your Apple account password every time you download an app, which is annoying. So for example, if I want to download this game, I must tap on this button and then enter my password and then click OK. But with the password pilot tweak, it will automatically enter your Apple password for you. Simply enter your password first on the settings panel and then go back to the App Store and then download the same app. Just tap on the button and let's see what will happen. And there it is. My password is there already, so there's no need for me to enter it anymore. This is a really simple tweak for the App Store that you can easily turn off and on anytime. Next tweak for the App Store is called the Auto App Updater, which will automatically install all the App Store updates for you in the background. And then it will notify you once all the apps were updated. So in the settings, you can set the time when it should update and only when you're connected to Wi-Fi. You can also select which apps you want to be updated and which ones you don't want to update. Simply switch the toggles on and off on that particular app. You can also check the update history for whatever changes were made on the app for that update. So with this tweak, I don't have to go to the app store and manually update all the apps because this tweak will automatically do that for me. Next, I have a couple of tweaks for the stock camera app. First one is called camera tweak, which added a lot of cool features to the camera app. So over here, I have the exposure and the focus, which you can easily separate by dragging it to wherever you want it to be. There's also a white balance button to adjust or lock the white balance, as well as a new button at the bottom that will open up more settings. You can switch to normal mode with just the focus or go back to the advanced mode with the exposure and focus. Next is the time lapse option where you can set the number of seconds before the camera takes another picture. Next is the timer where the time counts down before taking a new picture. This is great when taking a group picture and you want to be on it too. Next we have the settings where I can set up the app to always default to the advanced mode and to remember all the settings I made so that when I use the camera app again, I don't have to adjust the settings. Now let's switch to the video camera. So first it still has the tiny button, the normal mode as well as the advanced mode where you can still separate the exposure and the focus. Next is the frame rate where you can adjust the frames per second that the video camera will record. Next, you can also adjust the video resolution from 1080 to 288, which is really low. I don't know why they still put that option there. I think that 1080 and the 720 resolutions are good enough. Next, we have the aspect ratio where you can set it to 16 to 9 or 4 to 3. But for me, I prefer the 16 to 9 aspect ratio. So that's the camera tweak. Next tweak is called Quick Shoot Pro, which basically allows you to take a quick picture by double tapping on the camera app icon, and that's it. You can also record a video by simply tapping the camera app icon three times. You will see that the camera app icon has a blinking red light, which informs you that it's recording a video right now. To stop recording, simply tap the camera app icon three times again, and that's it. The next tweak that I will talk about is for the mail app called Attachments Plus, which basically allows me to attach any file to my email. Just tap and hold the screen, then tap the side button, and then here you can tap on the folder icon, which will then open up a file navigator where you can now select the file you want to attach to your email. Next week is for the Messages app and it's called Message Swiper. This allows you to swipe between conversations in the Messages app. This is great if you're in a conversation with a lot of people because you don't have to go back out to choose another person. Instead, you just swipe left or right on the screen to change between conversations. There's also a quick view feature before you fully transfer to another conversation with somebody. With the quick view, you can see the last message on that next conversation. This tweak is also compatible with other messaging app like WhatsApp, Messages Plus, and Byte SMS. Next tweak is for the music app and this one actually removes a feature in the app. It's called No Cover Flow because it prevents the iPhone from displaying the items in Cover Flow. 
The cover flow looks nice and all, but it's not really functional when listening to music. With no cover flow installed, it basically just lets you view the music app in landscape mode. So that's no cover flow. This is only for those who hates the cover flow in the music app. The next three tweaks are all for the Safari app. So let's start with the first one. It's called Safari Omnibar. This tweak gives the Safari app a Google Chrome-like Omnibar which combines the address bar and the search bar. I think this looks better compared to the default double bars at the top. Next one is called Grid Tab for Safari which allows you to view Safari tabs in a grid instead of a cover flow like pages. You can add a new page by hitting this button right here. You can also change the layout to 2x2 in the settings panel. Next tweak for the Safari app is called User Agent Faker which opens up websites in full desktop versions and not the mobile versions. I think this is a great tweak because sometimes the mobile versions are lacking features that the full desktop versions offer. Like for example, in YouTube, I cannot reply to comments on the mobile version but I can on the desktop version. So yeah, that's User Agent Faker. The next tweak for the Safari app is called Tab Plus which allows you to open infinite number of tabs in the Safari app. Right now, I have 8 tabs open, so let me open up at least 2 more tabs. As you can see, there are page dots at the bottom indicating that there's another page with a tab. So this is really great if you like to keep a lot of tabs open and want to access them quickly. The last tweak is for the settings app and it's called Pinnacle, which allows you to get back to the main page and the settings app without having to press the back button for several times. For example, I will navigate deep into the general settings. Okay, for me to go back to the main page, all I have to do is press and hold on the back button and I'm back on the main page. It's a really simple tweak, but I really like it a lot. So those are some of the tweaks you can find on Cydia that will make the stock iOS apps work better. I would like to see what tweaks you like, so please leave a comment because I'm curious what you guys use. Thanks for watching.